In this Photoshop tutorial, we're going to cover, you know what? It's not even that long of a Photoshop tutorial, so let's just get into this thing. Hey everybody, welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. I'm fresh off a trip to the West Coast. Microsoft in Seattle, Adobe in San Francisco. You can't ask for much better, uh, much better smooth trip. But by the time this video comes out, it's gonna have been like 10, 11 days since my last video, so I'm sorry for the delay. We're gonna talk today about creating a custom Apple style uh, wallpaper, actually customizing a pre-existing Apple wallpaper, I should say, but this effect does work on literally any image. In fact, I'll show you how to drag it from this image to another image, as long as I remember, when we go ahead and finish creating this effect here in Photoshop. So, with that in mind, let's take a look at how to do this. All right, so you can see here, this is what we're going to be creating. Kind of this, um, I don't know, colorful effect is really what it is. Um, let's go ahead and jump into it. So, now, if, if you are on a Windows machine, just go to, like, any free wallpaper site. Find some big, beautiful image. It can be a portrait. It can be a landscape. It can be anything. This will work on any photo. Maybe your colors will have to be a little bit different, um, but then again, maybe not, depending on what the image is. You can usually work with um, something pretty close to what I've got going on here. All right, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to my Finder, and I'm gonna choose uh, Go. Actually, you know what, I'm not gonna choose Go. I, I will choose Go, actually. I'm gonna go Go to Folder, um, and I'm gonna go to the folder, just forward slash library. I'm gonna hit Go, and it's gonna take me to like my main library folder where I can find desktop pictures. Now here under desktop pictures, I mean, we've got all these beautiful um, Apple you know, wallpapers. Apple always tends to have uh, fairly beautiful wallpapers. I'm looking for one of the Yosemite photos. I'm just gonna stick with what I've got here. There are some cool other Yosemite photos. In fact, maybe maybe to change things up, we'll do one of these photos. Yeah, let's do, let's, let's change things up a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this JPEG from this folder. So I'm gonna right click and just choose copy. And then I'm gonna go go to my, where is it, desktop. As you can see, I don't really use these folders that much. Right click and choose to paste the item. So we now have our wallpaper kind of out of Apple's stock of wallpapers. I don't wanna save over anything. I don't want to lose an image. Again, they're beautiful photos. Um, I don't wanna deal with any of that hassle. So simple copy paste and hey, now we can work with this photo in Photoshop. So I'm gonna drag this down, drop it on my Photoshop icon and great. Um, oh, by the way, guys, I think I'm going to debut this little magnifying glass app that I'm trying out, see how it works uh, in the tutorial. So as I work through this, I'm going to try to remember to zoom in on stuff that uh, could be zoomed in and help you out a little bit with the uh, with checking out the UI and everything. Why not make it a little bit easier? Hey, so before we get much further in this tutorial, I want to let you guys know that I'm selling a course over on tutvid.com. It's all about how to retouch images. A link just appeared up in the top corner of the video somewhere. If you pick up a copy of it, you help support Tutvid, you help support what I do and the website. And there's some other uh, courses that are going to be coming out soon as well. Uh, but for now, that's what I've got. And if you don't have it, if you pick up a copy, that'd be amazing. Let's get back to the tutorial. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Um, we begin basically with a brush. So I'm going to grab my brush tool and I'm going to right click and I want my hardness to be at 100%. I want it to be a very sharp edged circle that I'm drawing. I'm going to undo that command or control Z. I need to create a new layer here and uh, we can name this layer uh, colored dots, maybe something like that. And I'm going to go window brushes to open up my brush panel, window brush, excuse me. And we're going to do a couple things here. We're going to tick on shape dynamics and we're going to set the size jitter to 100%. Now you can can use a tablet for this as well and work with the pen pressure. I'm not using a tablet. I like the total randomization of just using the mouse. Um, and also the, the side effect is, hey, you don't really need a tablet to create a really cool effect like this. So that's why I'm just rocking the, the little mouse for now. Uh, so size jitter at 100% is great. Nothing else changes in here. Uh, maybe we'll tick on a little bit of scattering just to kind of scatter things out a little bit. I mean, we really don't actually need much scattering because we're essentially going to be clicking one click at a time as we create this effect. So now that I think about it, we probably don't really need scattering. Uh, we do, however, want color dynamics. So I'm going to tick color dynamics on, and I'm just going to set the foreground background jitter to 100%. The reason we set foreground background to 100% jitter is because the jitter is basically Photoshop uh, saying, hey, how much would you like me to vary um, the foreground background of this brush per every time you click? And when we say 100%, we say, look, randomize it as much as possible. What is foreground background? It's just the foreground and background color that you've selected there at the bottom of your, uh, your tool panel. So we're going to set those colors now, but 
this little setting is very important for this effect because it's kind of an intricate effect that we're building inside of the brush tool that we're then going to paint onto our canvas. All right, so foreground background jitter 100%. And uh, I think that's probably it for the brush panel. I'll come back to it in a second if I need it. Uh, now we need to set the foreground and background color. Now up here on my swatches panel, I have a cyan, magenta, and yellow color swatch. We're going to kind of use these three color swatches. Um, I'm going to begin with cyan and magenta here. So I'm going to click once for uh, cyan. I'm going to hit the letter X to set that as my background color. And then I'm going to sample also the magenta. So we're painting with cyan and magenta. Now, a couple things that are, are relatively important or more than relatively important. Uh, they're essential, in fact, for this effect. We want to go ahead and change the mode of the brush tool to color dodge. Now, this is important. This is not just setting the layer to color dodge, but the actual individual brush strokes that which we are laying down. See, if I set the layer to the blend mode color dodge, Oh, the brush, the brush strokes themselves aren't going to interact with each other in the same way uh, that setting the brush tool to the color mode color dodge would do. So that's kind of an important little step. Um, and actually, now that I'm looking at the image, I think I want to reduce the contrast a little bit. So I'm going to select the background layer. I'm going to throw a curves adjustment layer onto here. I'm just going to boost the black point a little bit and drop the white point a little bit. Maybe drop the white point a little bit more. There we go, something like that. And let's see how this works. I've never used this image before. I really haven't even pre-run this. Let's see how it looks. Uh, I've got a thousand pixel. Uh, brush tool. I actually probably should make it more like 1600 for the size of this photo. And really, depending on the size of your photo, it's going to depend on uh, how big or small your brush you want to make your brush. So I'm going to click once there. Oh, I probably don't want to do that. What I need to do before I start painting is reduce the opacity of my brush tool. Maybe I'll choose like, I don't know, let's try 30% um, and just click once, click another time, click another time, click another time. And you can see how Color Dodge is sort of just, you know, not only are we mixing foreground and background colors, but Color Dodge is giving us this really cool sort of like a glassy overlaid effect. Uh, it's really pretty cool. And we're just getting a nice mixture of both blues and magentas. And where blue piles up on top of blue, we get a really intense blue. Where magenta piles up on top of magenta, we get a really uh, intense like purpley color. Uh, and it's really, really cool. All right, so now what we want to do is we're going to keep magenta. I'm going to flip and make cyan my foreground color, and I'm going to select the yellow. So now we're going to mix in some yellow and see what that does for us. All right, so mixing in yellow is really going to intensify some of our pinks, but it's also going to give us some, like, you know, very green and orangey looking dots, which is really cool. It's really going to kind of uh, offset our effect a little bit. All right, so we probably... We probably have enough dots here. I mean, obviously, you can go as hog wild with this effect as you like. Um, but I kind of like what I've got here. I kind of dig it. And what I want to do next is just duplicate this layer using the hotkey Commander Control J. I'm going to shut off the original color dots layer because uh, we're going to come back to that later. Now, with this color dot selected, I can just grab my move tool here. I don't need uh, I don't need my brush tool uh, right at this moment. I'm going to go filter, uh, pixelate, mosaic. Now. This part of the effect, it's a couple things. Personal taste, how how wide you sort of want these streaks to be, um, but also it's going to depend on the size of your image. A very small image and 200 pixel square cell size is, uh, is going to be massive. Um, in fact, it's even a little bit big for this image, and Apple's wallpapers are uh, pretty large. I think I'm going to reduce this to like 70 pixels. I want it to be pretty small. Yeah, I really I dig that. I like that a lot. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And we've got now this sort of like pixely effect. Kind of cool. If I turn on the other effect, you can see we get kind of this interesting um, overlaid effect. Neat. Heading in the right direction. What I now need to do is blur this layer. Now, we could convert this to a smart object. We really technically don't need to, um, but smart filters are always better than regular filters. Then we're going to go filter, blur, motion blur, and I want a straight, hey, look at this, straight up and down blur set to 1600 pixels of blurring. And you can see what it's giving me, this very randomized, streaky looking color effect. I really, really like it. It looks pretty cool. Hit OK. And now comes the process of sort of reduplicating this upon itself to intensify the color and really bring the color out. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and we're going to set this initial layer to the blend mode of screen. This is going to just infuse some light into the situation here. You see that, how it just kind of brought some light in? I'm going to hit Command or Control J to duplicate it. Now we've got too much light. We want to sort of really pump the uh, contrast. I'm going to go like hard light. You can see how that really just adds a lot of contrast and richness. I'm going to duplicate this again and I think I'm gonna go like soft light maybe eh, maybe overlay yeah I like overlay and maybe I'll even duplicate that again um, pretty cool and I can reduce the opacity to that top overlay layer maybe like around 35 40 percent looks good for this image 
this is going to vary. Literally every image is going to be different. Just go with what looks good. You know, use the general techniques um, and go with what looks good. So I kind of dig this. I like where this is headed. Um, now I think I'm going to drag the color dots layer back on top of all of this. Hit OK. Um, the normal blend mode is pretty cool. I think actually I'll leave it at normal blend mode and just reduce the opacity. Um, you could leave it at normal blend mode and try like screen. Uh, which actually isn't too, too bad. You could try something like soft light. It kind of gets lost in the shuffle. Overlay the same thing. I actually kind of dig screen and then just reduce the opacity of that. It's just meant to be very subtle, you know, add depth, add those kind of geometric shapes down underneath there. Uh, I kind of like it. It uh, looks pretty cool. Next up, we're going to add a color balance adjustment layer. So now with the color balance adjustment layer, this is where we're going to begin sort of adding sort of a global uh, color adjustment to the entire image. This could be where you sort of blend things together. At this point in the tutorial, this is where a portrait photo versus a landscape photo versus something like this epic mountain shot at night, it's going to be very different. So it's just going to be very different effects uh, or color balances that you want to play with depending on the style of photo. In this case, I think I want to do something where I'm kind of pushing um, reds and magentas and blues a little bit. So here in midtones, I'm going to go like negative 10. Well, as soon as I say I'm going to push reds, I'm pushing some cyan here. Maybe I'm going to push cyan, magenta, and blue. Uh, and then let's just add just a touch of purple and then boost some blues there in the midtones. All right, I kind of like it. I'm going to go shadows here. Now for shadows, I'm going to also pull some cyan into them. Uh, I'm also going to pull some magenta into them. And I believe I'm also going to push some blue into them. What does it look like if I push yellow? Yeah, see, I think I want to push the blue. Not too much blue, though. So right around plus 5, plus 10 blue. And then up here in the highlights... Uh, let's try adding some red to the highlights. You can see that's going to really pull some of the magentas and pinks out of our uh, colored blur streaky effect. I kind of like that. So I'm just going to crank the reds up, you know, 40, 50, something like that is probably great. Uh, in terms of, I mean, if anything, a little bit of magenta, not really green. I'm not digging the green. Um, and then I think we might actually go with a little yellow for the highlights as opposed to blue. Just to really set things off a little, maybe like a negative 10, negative 15 for the, uh, for the yellow up there. You can see there's before, there's after. We're just intensifying the color, bringing out the color that's in the image and enriching the color here in the foreground effect. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and um, to keep things simple, I'll just go with a brightness contrast adjustment layer. I don't use them that much. Um, let's just add a couple ticks of darkness to darken this all just a little bit. Negative 10, I got negative 13 here, looks good to me. And then I might even reduce the contrast a little bit more because I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a gradient map uh, adjustment layer and when I set that to the blend mode of soft light it's going to really boost the contrast even more but it's also gonna pump some cool colors it's just a very colorful effect in general we're gonna go ahead and go, uh, choose gradient map here um, <laughs> kind of a crazy gradient here selected let's hit uh, select reverse here and just for the heck of it let's set the blend mode to soft light and see what this looks like um, it's actually not it's not horrible it's kind of interesting in fact I, I don't mind it um, let me double click on this, choose my gradient stripe. I've got all these different gradients to choose from. Uh, I did a tutorial recently on duotone effects, and I link in there to a free uh, gradient pack you can download, which is like all these colored gradients. If I can remember, I'll throw a card up here in this corner of the tutorial. Um, so I can try some of these different, uh, some of these different gradients here. Uh, let me hit OK and just untick reverse so we're doing this the right way. You can see that's actually kind of a cool, very galactic type color scheme. Uh, that's not bad. That's a little dark, maybe a little light. That's actually kind of cool too. This very like teal, yellow, greenish uh, color style looks very otherworldly. Uh, very bright blue and green, uh, more of a magenta and green. And you can even go crazy with some of these other colors. I mean, just mess around with it. I really, I come back to that one and that's pretty, that's pretty sweet. Not gonna lie. I kind of like this, this galactic-y looking one here. That's actually kind of neat. And then maybe I'll just reduce the opacity a little bit, help blend the colors together a little bit. So there's before, there's after. You can see how it just increases the contrast. And really, at this point, you can just go ahead, grab your text tool, set the color of the text to, like, white. Um, and I'll, just because of my website, I'm going to type tutvid, right? Um, I'm going to choose a different typeface. Maybe we'll go with this Nevis typeface, and I will make sure I'm not typing in all caps. And maybe I'll do, like, 30 points. There we go, something like that, just small. Uh, so, you know, again, this is if this is like your desktop wallpaper, you could set it like over here and you could set the blend mode to let's begin with soft light and then command or control J to duplicate it and set this one to overlay just to really give it some pop. 
uh, and then maybe even just reduce the opacity of that overlay a little bit. And just allow some of those colors to bleed on through there. Um, and just like this, you've created uh, a very customized Apple wallpaper effect. Now, as I promised, I, I'm going to show you how to just drag this over to another image. Let's actually just use the original uh, photo here. And look, look at the difference in the effects, by the way. So here's what we just created. Here's what we had, um, just much more pronounced circles. And if you like the pronounced circles, you just select that layer, you go back to the normal blend mode, and you crank up the opacity a little bit more. See that? Uh, not too shabby. Uh, and in fact, what you could do is select all these colored dots layers. So I select that layer, hold down shift, select the bottom layer, command or control T to free transform. It's going to say, hey, smart filters are going to be shut off, which means that blur is going to disappear. Don't worry, it'll come back. We'll hit OK. And uh, we're just going to stretch this guy straight up. Um, in order to sort of stretch those colors into our image more. You can see there goes the motion blur. Commit the change. Photoshop's going to re-render those four motion blurs, and we have what we have. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so we want to drag this over to a new photo. Uh, I'm just going to select all this junk here, group it up, and hide it. So let's say this is our new photo. What you can do over here, once you have this effect pulled together, you can, well, we can group all of this, right? We can just call this effect or whatever, and then grab your move tool. All you have to do is click anywhere out here. You select this, drag it over to a new image, hold down shift, and release the mouse key, and it's going to place everything in place. Now, in this case, uh, this wallpaper is actually a little bit wider than the wallpaper we just came from, so I'm going to just nudge this, uh, whoops, I'm going to nudge this group downward a little bit, and honestly, what I would do here is I would select all of these layers right here. These are the only layers that you need to select, Command or Control T, and I would just stretch them out. I would just make them a little bit wider. It's not like the prettiest, most perfect thing in the world, uh, but in this case, at least, it's going to be effective. It's going to make sure the effect spans the entire image, and you can see all of our color balance adjustments are there. With the noise layer, we might need to stretch it out a little bit just to bring it up all the way. Great. And you can quickly and easily bring this entire effect um, over to completely different images, portraits, other landscape photos, um, anything you want, anything, anything at all. So for creating a customized Apple wallpaper in Photoshop, and the brush tool and color dynamics and maybe some shape dynamics baked in there and the color the, the color dodge blend mode. I almost forgot for a second. And about 35 other things we covered in this tutorial. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tuffy.com. We'll catch you in the next one.